Greetings to God's people on this 21st Sunday in the season of Pentecost. We're here in the sanctuary of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California for our virtual worship service. We're so happy to have you with us wherever you might be. Let us pray. O oh God of compassion, so often we compare our lives to others as we try to feel that we are better than they are, and we ignore the standard that you have set for us on the cross. Too often, like the Pharisees, our prayers are full of pride instead of the true humility that befits forgiven sinners. Forgive us and help us celebrate your grace by loving one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When the corrupt religious leaders try to trap Jesus, Jesus tells them to give the emperor what belongs to the emperor and to God what belongs to God. To gather for worship is a reminder that our ultimate allegiance is always to God rather than to any earthly authority. Created in the image of God, we offer our entire selves in the service of God and for the sake of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, in mercy, has given Jesus to die for us, and for Jesus' sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus and by Jesus' authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always, and also with you.
Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. The First Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians
Greetings from Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believed. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Paying Taxes The Pharisees got together and planned how they could trick Jesus into saying something wrong. They sent some of their followers and some of Herod's followers to say to him, Teacher, we know that you are honest. You teach the truth about what God wants people to do, and you treat everyone with the same respect no matter who they are. Tell us what you think. Should we pay taxes to the emperor or not? Jesus knew their evil thoughts and said, Why are you trying to test me, you show-offs? Let me see one of the coins used for paying taxes. They brought him a silver coin, and he asked, Whose picture and name are on it? The emperor's, they answered. Then Jesus told them, Give the emperor what belongs to him, and give God what belongs to God. His answer surprised them so much that they walked away. Today marks almost one year until the next presidential election. One year and change. I dare say that most Americans are probably not much looking forward to this next year. This next year filled with deceitful ads, false promises, and divisive voices raised in anger. A year when the contrast between emperor and God will no doubt be quite profound. In the face of this, Psalm 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hearing those words, it almost seems that the psalmist is directly speaking to our nation this day, directly speaking to our nation this day and saying, a nation will be great, not if it has brilliant and charismatic leaders, not if it has a huge gross domestic product, not if it has an ever-growing military-industrial complex, not even if it breaks through the frontiers of science. None of these things determine a nation's true greatness. Rather, a nation's true greatness depends on the degree to which a nation acknowledges the sovereignty of God over its national life. The degree to which a nation's most important pledge of allegiance is to God. Blessed is the nation whose God 
is the Lord. Pastor Frederick Speakman once wrote about a vacation he spent at the Jersey Shore. A vacation at the Jersey Shore long before MTV made it famous. He writes, it was late afternoon and people were streaming from the beach back to their vacation homes in order to change their clothes and hurry to something else. This business of going on vacation can be very exhausting. Well, as the evening unfolded, an astonishing number of people were crowding onto a wide front porch. It was a cocktail party. As the party progressed and darkness began to fall, the crescendo of noise and laughter kept rising, a sure sign that the party was a great success. But then, the partygoers started singing. They were singing and slurring their way through several old standards, then a couple of pop tunes, and finally, I could not believe my ears when with the same near hysterical gusto they sang, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. They sang it verse by verse. He's got the sun and the moon in his hands, then laughter. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands, then raucous cheers. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands, then loud applause. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands, then roars of approval. Irritated by the noise, I thought to myself, Dear God, is this the way the world ends? Not with a bang, but with a, not even with a whisper, but instead with an off-key song. But then I thought, but are not these words true that they are singing? Are these words perhaps praise out of the mouths of babes? Surely it is true. God does have the whole world in his hands. The almighty, the all-powerful, the all-knowing, the ever-present one whom we call God. Yet it is not true the way they were singing it. It is not drunkenly true. It is not sloppily true. It is not easily and obviously and laughingly true. No, it is strangely and mysteriously and wonderfully and awesomely true. Someone bigger than the universe has a hold on the universe. For the universe is God's doing, and the universe does what God tells it. And we little ones cannot go against the grain of God's doing without getting splinters. Today's reading from Matthew describes a trap laid for Jesus by a group of corrupt religious leaders along with a group of dangerous political extremists. These two groups have both become envious of Jesus' popularity. Thus, they both want to destroy Jesus by getting Jesus to pick sides on a controversial issue. Their plot is well-conceived. Well-conceived, and yet rather surprising. You see, these corrupt religious leaders and these dangerous political extremists are actually enemies of one another. Yet, putting aside their differences for the moment, these two rival groups formulate their trick question. Formulate their trick question confident that However Jesus answers, whether in support of one of their positions or the other, it will lead to Jesus' downfall. And so, these two groups together approach Jesus. They approach Jesus and they slyly begin by praising Jesus' commitment to truth and justice. But then, they set their trap. 
is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Together, these two groups who are normally enemies are confident that their demand for a yes or no answer will put Jesus in a no-win situation. If Jesus answers yes, the corrupt religious leaders can denounce Jesus for siding with the Roman occupation forces. And if Jesus answers no, the dangerous political extremists can denounce Jesus for siding with revolutionaries calling for the violent overthrow of the government. Unfortunately for the two groups, Jesus sees right through their despicable plot. Jesus sees that neither group actually gives a tinker's darn what his answer is. Jesus sees that their only real interest is in laying a trap to destroy him. So Jesus says, Why are you trying to test me, you show-offs? Let me see one of the coins used for paying taxes. And then, holding up one of the coins, Jesus asks, Whose picture and name are on it? The emperor's. Then give the emperor what belongs to him, and give God what belongs to God. Give God what belongs to God. Remember those words from Psalm 33 a couple of minutes ago? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Just what nations will be blessed in our world today? According to the psalmist, it is those nations who give God what belongs to God. Those nations who acknowledge their dependence upon God. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were written to declare that we citizens of the U.S. are independent of dictators and tyrants. In fact, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were written even to declare that we citizens are independent of the tyranny of the majority. That means that the basic rights and liberties of each one of us as an individual is guaranteed, regardless of even what the majority thinks. Nonetheless, these great documents are based upon a declaration of dependence. These great documents are based upon a declaration of dependence, which states, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He's got the sun and the moon in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And if he's got the whole world in his hands, then most certainly he has this nation in his hands. This nation, which, if it desires God's blessing, must remember, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Ultimately, regardless of what happens next November, the only true Lord of our individual lives and the only true Lord of our nation's life is God. So we followers of Jesus in this land must give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, things like 
paying our taxes and studying the issues to become good citizens and informed voters. However, first and foremost, we followers of Jesus in this land must give to God the things that are God's. Give to God the things that are God's like our true obedience, our loyalty, and our love. Our love for the God who is our rock. Our love for the God who is our redeemer. Our love for the God who in love sent his son into this world to bless all nations. Bless all nations from a manger to a cross to an empty tomb. Bless all nations with the promise that this world is not all there is. People of God, in the end, you and I have no emperor but Jesus. Jesus, who is our Savior. Jesus, who is our Lord. Jesus, who, please, God will give us the strength to get through these next 12 months of campaign season. Amen.
set free by the truth of God's gracious love. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's good creation. O oh God, we pray for the church on earth. Make us one in spirit wherever we meet and however we worship. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the health of the life-giving waters of creation, especially the Pacific Ocean, the Colorado River, Lake Arrowhead, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, and the Sierra Pacific Snowpack. Guard them from misuse and pollution. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for leaders in our town, region, country, and world. Equip them to work for justice and for all people. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who are sick or in pain, for those who feel unclean in body or spirit, and for all in need of healing. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for St. Matthew's Church. Send your spirit to inspire in us words and deeds of healing in our neighborhood and in our wider community. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the faithful departed, especially Matthew and Martin, and we wait for the day when we join them in thanks and praise around your heavenly throne. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, faithful God, we place ourselves and our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Loving God, you have given each one of us a share in Jesus' life. Help us to bring your saving power and your healing love to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May God lift up God's countenance upon you and give you peace. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where God reigns forever and ever. Amen.